All right, guys, we're going to start day two of the 3.2 notes for college prep math. So we're going to talk about graphs of functions. So we're going to define a linear function and constant function. So let m and b represent real numbers, so that m does not equal 0. So a function can be written in the form of f of x equals mx plus b. Y'all are probably familiar with that. That's your linear function, right? m is your slope, and b is your y-intercept. A function that can be written in the form of f of x equals b is a constant function. In other words, that's going to be a straight line, right? So the graphs of linear and constant functions are lines, as I just said. So let's look at this. With our first one, that's a constant function, right? We have f of x equals 3. It's just one number, like our b value, right? So again, this is going to be a horizontal line when you have f of x equals a b value. Then for our linear function, we have in this case, the example is f of x equals 2x minus 3 down there. So it is a diagonal line, okay? So the graphs of functions, again, the equation over here, if you have y equals x, y equals x squared, and so forth, the equivalent function notation is in place of the y, put f of x. That is the thing that is changing it from an equation to a function notation, okay? You're changing your y with f of x. So don't let the f of x confuse you. So let's look at this, graphing basic functions. So if we were to graph the basic functions here, we got f of x equals x squared. Well, first off, to graph this, let's make a little bit of a table, all right? So in this table, we're just gonna take some values here. We wanna take some values on the left side of the zero, and our negative side, I should say, and then the right side, our positive side of zero, right, on the x-axis. So on the right side, I'm going from zero to three, and then on the left, I'm going from negative one to negative three. And when you plug those values into this equation, f of x equals negative, I'm oh, sorry, f of x equals x squared, you get these values. So zero squared is zero, one squared is one, right? Two squared is four, 3 squared is 9, and so forth, okay? So to plot these then, you can simply put these on a graph and see how this draws out. As you can see here, we have 0, 0, right down here. Then we went over to 1, 1, 2, 4, 4. Then we went up to 3 and 9. And then there was the same thing over here for the negative values as far as the y values. We had negative 1 and 1, negative 2 and 4, and negative 3 and 9. So that gave us our parabola here, opening upwards. So let's look at part B. So if g of x equals one over x. Well, let's look and think about that. Most of y'all know what x squared, how it's gonna look. Well, let's make sure we understand how one over x is gonna look. So if we go to desmos.com and do the graphing calculator, I'm just gonna type up here in the left hand corner there, I'm take one divided by x. And it automatically graphs it for us. So the asymptote looks like it's going to be a y equals 0 and an x equals 0. So we need to make sure we get enough points here to draw this out. So since we had g of x equals 1 over x, let's make a table. So we have a 1, a 2, a 3, and then a negative 1, a negative 2, a negative 3. In which case, it gave us these values. 1 over 1 is 1, 1 over 2 is 1 half, 1 over 3 is 1 third, and so forth down here. So that gave us some points. However, let's look at some x values that are a little bit different here. Let's look at what 1 half would give us, what 1 third, 1 fourth, negative 1 half, negative 1 third, one, negative 1 fourth. So it gives us a little bit easier values to graph or our y's if we're looking at that, okay? Because yes, we'll see that we got some values in the positive direction and some values in the negative direction, but we can even make it a little bit more easier on how to graph them for our vertical y values as well, because your g of x is in place of your y. So those are your y values, okay? So if we do that, it gives us these points right here. Again, as you can see, we went to one, it gave us one. We went to two, then one half and three and one third. Okay, so we got those values there. Then negative one and one, negative two and negative one half, negative three and negative one third. So it's getting closer and closer to 
I mean, y equals zero, but it's not actually going to touch that asymptote, right? It's an invisible line there. Well, then we want to see how far up and how far down it goes. So therefore, we want to see if there's a vertical asymptote, right? So that's why we went to one half, which gave us two, one third gave us three, one fourth gave us four. So it's showing that value going up. And the same thing with going to the negative values, so where it'll show the uh, the graph going down towards the asymptote as well on x equals zero. So with this one, we have negative one half, which gave us two, and negative one third, which gave us negative three, and then negative one fourth gave us negative four. So again, to graph these out, make sure you make a table. And you can use a calculator to calculate these values if they don't, if it's a little too hard to just do on top of your head. Don't be scared to use a calculator. As well as using the Desmos calculator that I had just shown you. All right, so let's do a little practice here. So we're going to graph by first making a table of points on each one of these. So we're going to say, so our first one is f of x equals negative x squared. And then we have for the second one, h of x equals absolute value of x minus 1. Okay, so with the summary of six basic functions and their graphs, so we're going to look at this. So the first function there, f of x equals x, and of course domain and range is negative infinity to positive infinity for both. And then we just have y equals x squared, which are probably going up. There are y equals x cubed, so we got a little kind of S-curve there. Absolute value of x for this is going to open up in a V shape. So root of x is going to be your point starting at 0, 0, and then going off in a direction, a positive direction for this one, for the square root of x. And then you have 1 over x, which we have already seen. So we got two asymptotes that are going on that bad boy. So graphs of functions. So we need to find the x and y intercepts of the function defined by y equals f of x. So with this, we've got the x intercepts are the real solutions to the equation. So we want to make f of x equal zero. So in other words, your y is equal to zero. And then you want to, for the y intercepts, is given by f of zero. So in other words, making the x value zero there, in which case then you'd be solving for y. So it'll make sense. We'll, we'll play through a couple of these. So we're looking at this one. We got our function of f of x equals 2x minus 4. So let's find the x-intercepts, or intercept here, right? Let's see what we got. So with this one, if we want to find the x-intercept, then we need to make if we were to write this out again, we have y equals 2x minus 4, right? It's the same thing. Well, and it said for x-intercept to make the y equal 0. Because whatever y is 0, that's where it's going to cross the x-axis. So if we make y equals 0, that's going to be 0 equals 2x minus 4. So if we add 4 to both sides, we should get 2x equals 4. So how do we get rid of that 2? Well, we're going to divide. We're left with x, and then what's 4 divided by 2? 2, right? So our x intercept is that x equals 2. Let's find our y intercept. For our y intercept, I'll put an a here so we know this is a. For our y intercept, so for our y intercept, we want to make our x equal 0. So in this case, we're going to have y equals 2 times 0 minus 4. So y equals what? You really should get negative 
4. So our y-intercept is at negative 4. And then for c, it wants us to graph the function. All right, so I got negative six and six going in either direction there. So let's grab this function. So we know our x-intercept is at two. So it's going to intercept x at two. And our y-intercept is at negative four. One, two, three, four. So therefore, we should have a line Therefore, we should have a line that looks just like that. If we come to the Desmos graphing calculator and we type in that function up here of 2x minus 4, you'll see it gives us that exact graph that we just drew. All right, so now I want you to try this out. We're graphing this function of f of x equals negative 5x plus 1. I need you to find the x-intercept, the y-intercept, and then the graph of the function. Alright guys, so I've learned a little something today. I'll see you next time.